shall we stand to usher in our pulpit participants? Father in heaven, we are so thankful because once again you have given us the privilege to come to your house of worship. We, the Goshen folks, thank you. And Father, now as we prepare to worship you, we pray that our worship will be in spirit and in truth. We also ask humbly that our hearts will be prepared for that which you have prepared for us. That when we leave your house of worship, we may not just be hearers, but may we be doers. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church say, Amen. Amen. Good morning, Goshen. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. It's good to see you. Will all of our Goshen members please stand? Beautiful. Now look around at, and take note of those who are not standing. That means you all are our visitors. Well, Pastor Gordon Frazier and I and officers and members of the Goshen Church family would like to welcome you here to this special place of worship. We are so glad that you are here with us today. If this is your first or second Sabbath with us, we are grateful that you have come to this place of worship. It is our hope that you experience the love of Jesus Christ 
and his presence during our worship. Now Goshen and those of you standing, please greet those who are sitting with a handshake, a hug, and a kiss, and welcome them here today. Thank you. Do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. Hallelujah, somebody. 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is anybody in the house today? You ought to give God praise. Uh, this is the holy day. This is the day that God has created just for you and for me. So when we come into the house of the Lord, we come in with praises on our lips. And we come in to give God all the praise that is due to his name. Uh, just so that you know, some of our members have been out this morning uh, feeding the homeless at one of the shelters. <coughs> Goshen is a busy church, always doing something to help somebody in our community. <coughs> and we give God praise for them and for what they're doing there. I think they're making their way back. I just want to let you know today that I'm excited. I'm always excited about what God is doing, what he's doing in our lives. We have began our 40 days of prayer, uh, and, and it's been exciting, um, you know, and I'm hoping that by now that everyone has received their books, and everyone have a prayer partner, and everyone have a list of people that they're praying for, and that they're beginning to reach out to those individuals that they're praying for. But I realize that everyone did not, did not have their, don't have their books. And because this is such an important book, I'm going to rewind. I'm going to rewind. And we're going to start right back at day one. So <coughs> for those of you who have missed we want to be on one accord. We want to move together. Amen? We don't want to some be at day 14 and some at day 2. And day, we want to be able to move together. And I recognize sometimes that we are not as uh, fast uh, as, as we ought to be. So we will just press the rewind button, button and we're going to go back to day 1. All right? So this afternoon, what we'll do is we will assemble at 4 o'clock in our groups so that we can begin to, to talk and begin to discuss some of the important things of the book. So we want to be, you want to make sure that you're, you're back at 4 or you stay, you have lunch with us and you come back uh, at 4 o'clock so that we will have uh, this in, in, in a, an interesting discussion. This is a very, very interesting devotional book for you and it will my prayer is that will help us all to grow in faith amen one thing another thing i want to point out to your attention all of us have smartphones yeah right i don't think anyone is dealing with a flip phone anymore uh-oh somebody please help elder carolyn we've got a somebody please help her Bring her into the 21st century because we don't want the. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll get you, we'll, we'll get her there. We want to take our service to another level with technology. Amen. And I know you may have different Bible apps on your cell phones. But I would like for you to take your cell phone out or write it down. You can do it later. And I would like for you to go and download the Bible app Logos. Logos Bible app. Logos Bible app. It's a free Bible app. Now, what that does, when you download Logos Bible app, and when it asks for your location, make sure you click on to find your location. The reason why, whenever you get into this space, we use a system called Proclaim. That's Proclaim. You'll be able to follow the service on your phones. And when a text of scripture comes up, there's a signal in Proclaim that will signal it to you and it will pop right up on your phone. So you'll be able to follow the scriptures that's being read or what I'm preaching from. So that's Logos, Logos Bible app. 
You go, you download that on your cell phones, on your smartphones, or uh, you know, on your tablet. Uh, make sure that you get you, uh, your, the signal. You want to make sure that you, you choose the location so that you can get your signals. Yes, there's a question. L-O-G-O-S. The blue one with the cross in the center. Uh, yes, Logos. L-O-G-O-S. Looks like this. Uh, you probably can't see it. It's a blue with a cross in the center. You just download that on your smartphones and make sure that the location you, you have that checked and it's going to be an important, it's an important app as we do things. In church, you'll be able to get that uh, um, right on your smartphones, your, the scriptures. Now, here's another important thing you may go, you, you want to remember. Well, what was the scripture text that the pastor used this past Sabbath? It's right there. You just uh, open up that app and it will pop right up the text of scripture. You can share with your friend what or with your friends, what you discover or what you learn this past Sabbath in church. So it's a wonderful, wonderful tool for us, for you to share, as well for us, to, for you to follow what is going on in, in church as the preaching and different presentations and for offering, will you be able to get notifications that it's, uh, we can send you a notification on Thursday reminding you to get ready to give on Saturday. Uh-huh. And it's so sophisticated that I can go in there and I can say, uh, Donovan, I need you to give $75 this Sabbath. And it will pop right up on the phone. Technology is a beautiful thing. I just came back from Alabama and we were talking, this was one of the things that we were talking about. We already had the software, we were already using it, but didn't know everything that the software could do. So I found out some things, and so we're going to just use the software that we've already been using to God's glory. So may God bless us as we worship him today. I want to welcome each and every one of you here today. I'm glad that you're here to worship, and we're here to worship God in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord, saints. All right. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm glad to be here this morning, I'll tell you. Because God didn't have to grant me this day, let me tell you. We take it for granted, but God didn't have to, let me tell you. I got a couple scriptures I want to read to you. Uh, Psalms 115, 1. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. Because of your love and faithfulness. And I got another scripture, Psalms 145 and 3. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Amen.
Everybody clap your hands. 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 We praise you, oh Lord. We praise you, oh Lord. We magnify your name. The way we praise This is the way we praise you. Clap your hands. This is the way we praise you. Clap your hands. This is the way we praise you. Clap your hands. This is the way we praise you. Lifting our voice.
Christ. Christ the Lord. He's our Lord and our Savior, Christ the Lord. Heavenly Father, we are grateful, Lord. And this praise is for you, Lord. We pray that you accept that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because you are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
God is my light in the time of darkness. Oh, God, God.
many believe that? It's prayer time, church. In the book, The Prayer Saturated Church, there's a passage that says, if we call upon the Lord, he has promised in his word to answer, to bring the unsaved to him, to pour out his spirit among us. <clears throat> if we don't call upon the Lord, he has promised nothing. I'm going to say that again. If we don't call upon the Lord, he has promised nothing, nothing at all. It's that simple. No matter what is preached, what is claimed, or what is believed, the future will depend upon our time of prayer. This is the engine that will drive the church. Prayer is the engine, church. Can't go nowhere without an engine. You will be just stuck on stupid. We need an engine. And I'm here to tell you that prayer is the engine. And if you'd like to be a part of that engine, I'd like you to come to the altar or to kneel, whatever suits your fancy. But we need to get this engine moving. We come to you this morning, Lord Jesus, knowing that you said, if we don't ask, Father God, that your spirit can't be poured out on us. Father God, we come knowing that you are the only wise God, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, our creator and our redeemer, Father God. King of kings, Lord of lords, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful counselor, mighty God. Father God, I come asking that you would hear this prayer this morning. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would remove those things that are not like you. I ask for a clean heart, Father God. Forgive me if I've offended anyone in any way, Father God. Forgive me for any anger or any strife or anything I've held in my heart, Father God. I don't want anything to interfere for me interceding this afternoon, Father God. Lord Jesus, we come with a thankful heart this morning. We are so thankful that each and every one of us who walked up to this altar can walk. Father God, we're thankful that we can get down on our knees. We're thankful, Father God, that we can breathe in and out, that we can see and hear and that we are in our sound minds, Father God. Every day I see those who don't ha are not afforded those opportunities. So Father God, I say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for a reasonable portion of health. Thank you, Father, for a sound mind. Thank you, Father, for dying on the cross for my sins, for standing in the gap for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for this time of prayer. 
thank you, Lord Jesus, for each and every person who's here today. We thank you for our visitors, Father God. We thank you for everyone who has come to this house of worship, this house of prayer, Father God. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We know, Father God, it didn't have anything to do with an alarm clock. Father God, we thank you for your precious blood. Father God, we thank you for just touching us. We thank you for loving us, Father God. And we thank you for keeping us. Father God, I come to you interceding for those who, who are sick. Be with Belinda in a special way. Father God, I ask that you be with Belinda, that you would touch her and that she would feel your presence right now. I ask, Father God, that you would be glorified above all things. Lord Jesus, I ask that you continue to be with Sister Austin. I thank you so much that you brought her by here last Sabbath, Father God. Continue to heal her body. Father God, I ask a special prayer for my cousin Marsha, Lord Jesus. I ask that as she sees the cardiologist, that they would find nothing there that would keep her from getting her transplant, Father God. And I claim that in the name of Jesus Almighty, Father God, I ask that you would be with each and every one of our seniors. Touch them, Father God. I thank you that Edith is here with us this uh, Sabbath. Father God, I just say hallelujah and thank you, Father God, that you brought her out. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you are doing in our lives and all that you will continue to do and all that you have done, Father God. I thank you and I praise you and I ask that you would be with all of our young adults, Father God. Goshen is a church on the move, Father God, and I thank you for all of those who are helping it to move, Father God. Be with our youth, Father God, all of our, our young deacons, Father God. It brings me such joy to see them, Father God, and the work they're doing for the Lord. Continue to bless them. And be with our children, Father God. I ask that you bless and keep them. And Father God, we've been going through 40 days of prayer, and I ask that as our past, as we rewind, that, Father God, you would be with each and every name that is presented to you on a daily basis. I ask, Father God, that you would hear the requests of your people and that you would honor those requests and that you would be glorified. And, Father God, now I ask that you would touch our pastor, Father God, that you would touch him, Father God, and that your Holy Spirit would be with him this morning, and that we would not hear him, but we would hear a word from you, Father God. I ask that you would continue to help him to his health to improve, Father God. And that you would bless him in a mighty way in his family. Lord Jesus, I ask that you continue to be with those all around the world who are suffering. Uh, those in California, Father God, and, and, and those here in Chicago. All the things that are happening here, Father God. Just protect those people and, and continue to bring people here, Father God, to this safe haven. And Lord Jesus, we'll be very careful to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. Father God, if there been anyone that I have forgotten in this prayer, Father God, I ask that you would acknowledge that. In Jesus' precious name, we do pray. Amen.
Baptist Church. Today is Children's Church, so our children will be going in the back. Uh, they have a program set up for them, ages 3 to 12, I believe. But before they leave, they're going to take an offering, so please give freely to our children's offering. Father God, we just ask that you would bless this children's offering today, that it would go to the nurturing and the developing of their spirits and their souls. In Jesus' name, amen. We have a baby to be blessed today, amen? I'm asking that the parents and the family members and all of those that are involved in the baby blessing um, of Treasurer Mackenzie Williams Amen. We ask that you would just come at this time. Amen. We have before us Terry, Terry Williams, and Angel Buckles, amen, amen. and little Treasure. I'm thinking about the name, and I dare not ask what the meaning of it is. <laughs> but if I'm to guess, it's something very precious. And, and, and I know that treasure is a very precious little, little lamb. She, a matter of fact, she just turned one last week. Amen, amen. And it's so good to dedicate her to the Lord today. The Bible makes it very plain. And sometimes we believe that the children that we have, that they belong to us. Now, I want to let you know that treasure is not yours. Treasure is on loan to you by God. Because every one of us belongs to God. God is our ultimate father. Amen? Amen. 
And God has given into your hands this precious gift, mom and dad, to take care and to nurture and to encourage. The, the, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 8, verses 2 through 6, take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. Uh, little ones, the little children, are very important to God. They're very special to him. And so God takes a very, very special attention. So he's saying that we are not to despise them. We're not to put them away. We're not to push them aside. But we are to embrace them because they are God's little ones. And Jesus, when the disciples, after a very busy and tired day, the disciples thought to themselves, well, you know what? The master doesn't have any more time for children, so let's keep them away. And Jesus said, they suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So by way of the children, because they're a heritage unto God, because she belongs to God, it is the parents and the grandparents and the church family's duty Amen? To make sure that she gets the nourishment. To make sure that she gets what she needs so that she can thrive. So that she can grow in God's grace. The custom of baby dedication is, is one that was passed down from the Bible times. Jesus, when Jesus was born, Jesus was brought into the temple and he was dedicated. The priest took him, lift, the, lift Jesus high up in the air, prayed, and then hand him back to his mother. So it's something that is important for us to do, to dedicate them, to return them back to the Lord for God's service. And so this is what the parents are doing today, returning treasure back to God for his service. I want to read the statement of commitment to the parents the statement of commitment says, in bringing this child for dedication, you're accepting a sacred responsibility by your symbolic act to seek to express your belief that this child is not only yours, but God's. The congregation joins you in dedicating this child and pledges to assist you in working towards the day when this act of dedication should be followed by baptism. That's the goal. Amen. And a fully in, in entering into the relationship uh, of, the, of this church family. You, therefore, Terry, an angel, you must promise to do all in your power to bring this child up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Do you so covenant with God? Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask all the elders if you would come forward so that we can have a prayer of dedication, dedicating treasure back to God. Now, I don't know if I still have it. I probably don't. But I'm going to try. Would she come? Huh? Let's see. given to Angel and Terry. God, this special little baby, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless her. I pray that no harm will come to her. I pray, God, that her steps will be so ordered after you. 
I pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that everything that she puts her hands to will be blessed. I pray, God, that you will just continue to love her. Give the parents what they need to train her, to teach her the ways of the Lord. Help them to teach her when she lies down, to teach her when she gets up, to teach her as she walks, to teach her as she talks. Help them to teach her about you so that she will always have you in her heart. God, we present her to you today. We dedicate her to you today, to your service. So I pray that you will use her in a mighty way. I pray that she will grow in grace and in knowledge and in stature and in favor with God and man. I pray, God, that the anointing of your Holy Spirit will fill her little life so the treasure will always remember and know that you are her Savior and know that you are her friend, know that you are her God. God, we thank you for her today. We thank you for the parents deciding to dedicate her today. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we do solemnly pledge as a church family to stand by them and to stand by treasure and help her to walk and to talk about your love and your grace. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you for the safe delivery. Thank you, God, for an everyday taking care of her. Thank you for the parents. Help them to be the example to her that you want them to be because our only God that, they, that, that she will see is that in her father and that in her mother. So, Father, please let it begin there in the mighty name of Jesus. We dedicate her to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Oh, this is a precious moment. Praying. Oh, she, she, she's in. She's, she's all right. Well, I will take you home. <laughs> I just want to give you uh, the baby dedication certificate. They said this is to certify that Treasure Mackenzie Williams was dedicated to the was dedicated to God at the Goshen Seventh Day Adventist Church on the 12th day of December, uh, 2015. Our parents, Angel Buckles, uh, Dad Terry Williams, and there's a scripture below. It says, "Have no greater joy." than to hear that my children walk in truth. And that's 3 John 4. Amen. Amen. At this time, we last, last week, the last few couple of weeks, we had baptism, and we're asking all of those baptismal ca candidates, if you would mind, come forward. We have your baptismal certificate to present to you. Okay. Is he here? Marcus, we also have yours, so if you would come forward also. You never got your certificate. We want to make sure you get it. Amen. First uh, certificate, it says, uh, baptism, is a s baptism symbolizes confession of faith in Christ, adoption into the family of God, commission for service. In harmony with our Lord's command, uh, Joshua Emmanuel, Joshua James Emmanuel Cook, amen. amen, that's a long name, a long name, was baptized here at Goshen on the 21st of November. And we have the same for John L. Bell. Uh, Marcus is a little different. 
Marcos was baptized here on April the 11th. He never got his baptismal certificate at that time, so we have this for him. Lauren Denise Burton, amen. Roy Griffin, Jr. Edward E. Lomax, Jr. So pass it to, okay, we have the spouse, uh, Shamantel, okay, Lois Lomax. And LaShawn Visser, however, she is not here, so she'll get hers at a later date. I encourage you to read your commitment in the back, and it's good to sign, sign it, so. At this moment, just, let's just turn around to the congregation, and we want to ask all board members to come and give them the right hand of fellowship. I don't know if we did that probably before, but let's just do it again. Board members, just come quickly. Welcome. The, we didn't. Just come, let's give them a welcome. Welcome to the Goshen family, a family where they can belong, a place where they can grow. I want to encourage the members after service to make sure that you reach our baptismal candidates and just let them know that uh, you love them. Let them know that you're praying for them. Amen? And please keep them in your prayers. Uh, so you know also we will have another baptism next Sabbath. I'm excited about that. Uh, since we don't have a big water bill, we don't mind firing the pool up every week because that's what we're about. That's the mission that we're on. I want to introduce three young men that is going to lift us up in praise before, before I speak. Jukari Lumos is on the keyboard, gifted musician. I had the opportunity to hear Nicholas Hall, a powerful 
worship leader and singer, and the young man, Ashton Jones on the drum. They very, very great musicians. I want you to welcome them as they minister to us at this moment in time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, that was a mandate. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. How I many are glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I won't be before you long, but the Lord placed a song on my heart earlier this week, and I just want to minister, to, minister that to the Lord and to you. Please feel free to join into the worship. It's a very simple song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. With holding nothing. With holding nothing, with holding nothing, yeah, with holding nothing, yeah, Lord, I surrender all to you, and everything I give it to you. Withholding nothing, yeah. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing, yeah. Withholding nothing. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. I give you all of me, yeah, yeah. I give you all of me. Can you help me say that? I give you all of me. 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 I give you all of me, I give you all of me, yeah, yeah. I give you all of me, hey, 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 you're King Jesus, you're my Savior forever, yeah, I give you all of me, I give you all of me, can you help me lift that up, say King Jesus, my Savior forever, yeah. I give you all of me, yeah. I give you all of me. One more time, King Jesus, my Savior forever, yeah. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. And I surrender. To you, everything I give it to you, and I surrender all to you, you Lord. Everything I give it to you, Lord, withholding nothing. With the holding nothing, with the holding nothing, yeah, with the holding nothing, yeah, we withhold nothing, Lord, we withhold nothing, Lord, we withhold nothing, Lord, we withhold nothing, Lord, we withhold. Lord, no, we withhold nothing, Lord. We 
withhold nothing, Lord. We withhold nothing, Lord. I surrender all to you and everything. Lord, I give it to you, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, yeah, withholding nothing, yeah, 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 I will see the goodness of the Lord and I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, and I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Do I have any confident people in the house tonight? And I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. So fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Lord, fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over, fill me up, yeah, until I overflow, I want to run over, I want to run over, so fill me up, yeah, yeah, until I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over, love of God, overflow, for me, yeah. oh my soul, love of God, what you overflow. So fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Can you help me say it? Say, fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. One more time. Come on. Fill me up. Until I want to run over. I want to run over. Say, fill me up. Till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over, I want to run over, I want to run over, do you 
want to run over? Do you want to run over? Last time. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Won't you fill me up? To lie on the floor, cause I want to run over. I want to run over. Can we lift our hands as an act of surrenderance unto our God? Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and give him the fruit of your lips. Come on, minister to him. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, yeah, 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 yeah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus, yeah. We love you, Jesus, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. Fill me up until I overflow. What a prayer. I wouldn't run over. Fill me up till I overflow. May God be praised. I wouldn't run over. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for lifting us in worship again. That is a prayer all of us should pray every day for God to fill us up until we overflow and knowing that we wouldn't run over. If you're happy, you know it, say amen. amen. And now if you're really, really happy, why don't you give God a big old shout of praise? Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. You're here to worship. You can worship God. You can worship God because you worship him in spirit and in truth. And there's no other way to worship him. We get excited for a lot of things. Ellen White said you can go to the basketball game, you can go to all of these games, you can do all of these things and you can get excited about it and scream to the top of your voice. But when you come into the sanctuary, when it's time to give God praise, you just want to be silent. 
she said that that's not worship if you can praise him uh, while you're enjoying your life you can praise him when you come into his presence uh, you can praise him every day it was David that said praise the Lord with a sound of the trumpet praise him with a timber and dance to everything that had breath Praise the Lord. All right, all right, all right. All right. You take your Bibles and go with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Matthew, chapter 25. The scripture is on the screen for those of you who can find in Matthew chapter 25. This is 14. I'm going to wait for you. I hear pages turning. I see smartphones moving. Amen. Reading from the New King James Version, I want to invite you to stand as we read God's Word and reverence His Word, Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 17. The Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them fi other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained two more. That's enough for now. Let us pray, Father, as we open your word. Bless us to see things that you want us to see. God, I pray that you will speak through me the only way you can. Let your word be acknowledged in our hearts and may it transform our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The the sermon that the series that I began a few weeks ago, looking at it again, as we look at the second part, the, my main focus of text is Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. God said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. The last time we looked at starting over, we talked about a transition mindset. Uh, we talked about change, the challenge of, of, of giving up things and moving forward. And we talked about God's promise to protect us as we move. Today's sermon title is Forming Your Faith for Success. Affirming your faith for success. Now, many of us have a hard time with trust. We really don't like to trust each other. We, we have a hard time even trusting ourselves. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Trust is a, a difficult thing for, 
some of us it doesn't come easy. And even the ones that when we used to trust, someone did something wrong to us that severed that relationship of trust. We let them go by the wayside, and we no longer want to trust them. Uh, but even though we have this difficult time trusting people, we still come to church. We still have our hallelujahs. We still shout praises to God, and we think we are going to heaven. By not trusting. I stop by to tell you today, Goshen, that trust is an important thing because trust and faith goes together. You can't separate them. Sometimes we tend to separate trust and faith, but ah, they go together. This parable, this story that we just read Jesus was given this parable at a very crucial time in his ministry. The setting was Mount of Olives. The disciples were astonished at the magnificent temple, Herod's temple, who was built. The building, some said, it's about ten, was about ten stories high. Yeah, they said it was adorned with gold and silver all over it. So the building itself was a magnificent sight to behold. So Jesus is with his disciples and, and they are looking with, at this phenomenal building with astonishment. Jesus goal at that time was to point them away from the awe of temporal things. You see, they were caught up in things that will perish. And so Jesus set this parable to show them that they need to change their focus. Instead of looking at temporal things, uh, to be successful, they need to look at heavenly things. Uh, tell your neighbor we need to look at heavenly things. We get caught up in things that doesn't matter. Except being caught up in the kingdom of God. How many of us, or, or when last have you sat down and in your mind's eye view the kingdom of God? Got a picture of what God's kingdom is like. Or, or how many of you have ever sat down and really pull that picture in your mind. You see, when we pull the picture of God's kingdom in our minds, it gives our heart a longing to achieve just that. It makes us want to achieve God's kingdom. Now, this parable that we'll look at today is started out really in the 24th chapter of Matthew. Jesus uh, started to talk uh, about different parables. He talked about the fig tree. He, he talked about success that is derived from the kingdom of God. He talks about that no one knows the hour that the Son of Man comes. And Jesus laid out all of these different parables. But then he came to this parable he told them the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country. Call his servants unto himself. And he decided to give them his goods. I want to let you understand that. Whose goods? His goods. Huh? Whose goods? His goods. The kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So, in other words, uh, this parable is talking about God and the fact that God is delivering to you and to me his goods. 
God trusted us enough. God had faith enough to give and to place in your hands and my hands his goods. That's how much trust God has in us. That's how much faith God has in you. That's how much God believes in you and me to trust us with not just some of his possessions, but to trust us with all of his possessions. I want you to know today that God believes in you. God trusts you. God has faith in you. Uh, others might not trust you. Others may fail you. But God trusts you. I like what Marvin Sop says. He saw the best in me. When everyone else around could only see the worst in me. God saw the best in you. And God trusts you with everything that he has, all of his goods. And God, knowing that we are nothing more than crooked, messed up people, still God trusts us. Because if you and I understand the scripture that God has faith in us, and that God knew, knows the end from the beginning, God knows what you will be going to become before he was even, before you were even thought of, God still trusts you. He saw the best in you. God saw something in you and me that has motivated him to trust us. Trust us with the ability of abundant, abundant life. God saw that you and I were going to be very special. He wants us to be successful. He wants you to have the best in life, the best things possible in life. Watch this. Put it up on the screen. When I saw this, this blew my socks off. Studies shows it is said that it takes one out of every 40 to 250 million of those little tadpole things called sperm to fertilize an egg. Mm. So if you really think about it, the fact that you and I are here today. It says that one in at least 40 to 250 million sperm made it to fertilize that egg. Now they, they, they had to navigate their way and, and, and bulldoze some uh, just to get to that egg first. Uh, and, and if you know anything about biology, the first one that gets there fertilizes and all of the rest dies. God saw that one little tadpole looking sperm. God navigated that one little sperm. God guided that one little sperm to that egg. And there you and I were conceived and created. God knew from the beginning that that sperm would have made it to fertilize and to bring about you and me. So God had a design for you. God's got a purpose for you. God trusted you and me. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, before I formed thee in the belly. Somebody's not listening to me. 
Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So in other words, before you were even for formed, uh, before you were even that, that little sperm, before that God said, I know you. Uh, before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. God is speaking to Jeremiah, but the same promise, the same text is for you and for me so that you and I will know of a certainty that we are created by God. We are thought, we were thought of by God. And so God has a special design for you and for me. This is not so that we may get all puffed up and think that we're a bag of chips. This is not so that we would get arrogant and full of pompousness and haughtiness. The truth is, this is not for some kind of a self-knowledge. This is so that you can fulfill the purpose that God has designed for your life. Now Paul writes and he warns us about being all puffed up, thinking that we are more than we ought to be. We ought to think. Some of us think that we are so great. Some of us think that, you know, when we get up in the morning and we look in the mirror and as they tell you, look in that mirror and you say, I am somebody. I was designed. The one thing they missed to tell you is that not you are not somebody by yourself. You're only somebody when Jesus is in your life. Without Jesus, you are nobody. Because with Jesus, everything then becomes possible. The ultimate goal that God is working for us is salvation. God is working to restore us from the broken relationship that the devil has designed. That broken relationship is what God wants to restore. So Paul says in Romans chapter 12 verse 3, For I say through the grace given unto me that every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. So Paul says, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Don't think because God has made you and designed you and he knew uh, about you. Don't think that you're, you're so much. Or you're all that in a bag of chips. Don't think about that. Think soberly because God has designed each and every one of us with a measure of faith. Uh, I used to think that Paul was just talking about our faith in God. But Paul is talking in this text about God's faith in us. The faith that God has put in us and the trust that God has given us. The faith that caused him to give us the gift of life. It's an awesome feeling to know that you and I are special because we are created in the image of God. And we're entrusted with the gifts from God. But it can become an awful and tragic thing when we begin to think and walk around, walk around here with arrogance and high-mindedness because of the multiplicity of gifts that God has given. The text is clear, my friends. It is intended to help us to understand who owns the gift. The gift that God has given to you and to me, it is owned by God. Matthew chapter 25 verse 14 uh, says, He delivered unto them his goods. 
It belongs to God. Everything, every gift that you have belongs to God. The gift of music, the gift of a smile, the gift of hospitality, it all belongs to God. And you can choose what you do with the gift or how you're going to use the gift. The first component that I want to talk about, the first point in this gift, this component of faith, is the divine component. The, the component that says that God is the author and the giver of gifts. If we are going to be successful, we must embrace the reality that God has faith in you, God has faith in me. There is this divine component in the text. The text says, God gives them his gifts. He delivered to each of them. One, he gave five talents, five gifts. The other, he gave two talents. But watch the text says, he give each of them according to their abilities. You see, some of us can't handle what God has designed for us. Some of us, if we were to get more gifts, more talents, we wouldn't be able to handle it. Because the ones that God has given to us now, we're not even handling it well. But yet, we want more. I'm getting a little hot here. Forgive me. I don't know why I start with it. I should just start without a jacket because somehow I always get hot. It feels a little warm in here. I don't know, maybe it's just me. So to all of us is, will get the gifts or the abilities according to what we can handle. And when God has given you that gift, you need to use what God has given you so that he can give you some more. That's the divine component. The divine component is that God owns the gift. God owns everything. And a cattle on a thousand hills is his. God has entrusted you and me with gifts to be used for his glory. Go back to the text. Text in Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, for the kingdom of heaven is, is, is a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants. He called his own servants. In other words, although faith begins with God, believing in you and me, Faith cannot be activated until it extends to you and me the ability to believe and trust God. So God has given us a measure of faith. Each and every one of us have a measure of faith. And that measure of faith that God has given us is, for, is to activate the ability to believe in God. The gift is God's. Whatever you have belongs to God. The first thing that we need to acknowledge is that it is God's. Everything that we have belongs to him. The second thing that we need to acknowledge about faith and the part that it plays is, is that we have to follow the process. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, But without faith is it impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, no matter how much God believes in you, no matter how much faith God put in you, no matter how much God trusts you, you must first Believe that God is the rewarder of all things. You must diligently seek him. God cannot give us 
the expected end that he has for us. Because some of us wouldn't be able to handle the success that God has prepared for us. My brothers and sisters, we are to be the head and not the tail. But we are, we are the tail because we fail to use the abilities that God has given us. Some of us, you know, it's just like when I started, you wouldn't believe I, 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 I played, started to learn piano from a very young age. You wouldn't tell for about two or three years. But I had one problem. I had music inside of me. I can hear the music. I can hear the notes. But I would get on the piano, and back in those days when with my teacher, you know, you play a wrong note, she had a little stick. I don't know, you probably don't know about that. But she had a little ruler thing, and she would hit you on the knuckles. And boy, I used to get mad. But I wasn't sanctified back then. So I used to get real hard. You see, because I wanted to get on the piano and I wanted to play like Beethoven. <laughs> now that, that's what I wanted to do. I did not want to develop the gift. I didn't have the patience to develop the gift that God had placed inside of me. And some of us are in the same position. We don't want to develop the gift. We want to get on the track and we want to run like we're, like we're Usain Bolt. We want to run so fast. We, we don't want to spend the time in the training process. The gift that God has given to us, you've got to cultivate the gift. You've got to do something about the gift. See, I'm not talking about success that deals with only earthly things. I'm talking about success that deals with heavenly things. For what will it profit a man or a woman to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I'm not talking about success that comes because you're a child of God. And I'm talking about success that comes because you love God and because God loves you. And because what God has given to you, you use it for his benefit. Some of the most famous musicians out there that can really sing, gifted. But the gift is not used to glorify God. So it's just a gift. But a talent is used to glorify God because God gives talents. And whatever talent God has given to you, you and I ought to glorify God by using them for his glory. Amen. You need to be willing to serve. You need to be willing to develop whatever gift God has given to you. If it's a gift of prophecy then you need to prophesy. Hmm. If it's the gift, I gotta be careful what I say. If it's the gift of tongues, then you need to use it. But be careful how you use it. Because we get all confused with the gift of tongues we think it's the babbling that people just get up and babble. That's not what the Bible says. It is a language. It's being able to interpret the language. My wife, you don't know, but she's got the gift of tongues. Hmm? Some of you have the gift of tongues because you speak a different language. Right? It is a gift that God has given to you. So if someone is to walk into the church and, and they're, they're, they're speaking Spanish... You ought to get up and you should be able to help them out. That's the gift of tongues because in the day, they all were speaking the different languages, but they understood what was being spoken because it was in their language. It's a gift, but sometimes we 
as Christians, Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we shy away from that gift. Whatever gift God has given, whatever talent God has given to you, you ought to use it to his glory. It is to glorify God. It is to bring honor and praise to God. It is there where we can find an avenue to use and glorify God. Psalm, in Psalm 1, David, David says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, but standeth nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law that he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. He shall bring it forth his fruit in due season. His leaves also shall not wither, but whatsoever he do it shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are a chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. In other words, David, help me to testify that God is a great God. Help me to testify, David, that God says if you walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, if you trust me and you walk in the ways uh, that I want you to walk, you shall be planted like by the rivers of waters. You shall bring forth fruit in due season. Your leaves, you shall grow. You shall prosper. That's what David says. So in order to prosper with the gift that God has given to you, it's not to walk in the, and seek the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed, he said, is the man who walk not in that counsel. If you and I are going to have the faith that produces success. We must embrace God's divine favor. God has divine favor on all of you today because God has created you for a particular purpose. You just need to know your purpose. You need to know the gift and the talents that God has given to you. You need to understand that that has to be used for the glory of God. The divine favor that is on you is a favor that says no matter what you do, no matter how far you go, because I designed you, because I thought of you before you are even conceived, I love you and I will go grab you from wherever you are and I will bring Bring you to me. Divine favor is favor that says, I am the giver of the gift. Whatever you need, I've got it. Whatever you need, I can supply it. Whatever you need, I can provide it. Because if I sought you out before you are even born. There is nothing that will be too difficult for me to do for you. You must embrace God's divine favor. The favor that God believes in you. The favor that God has faith in you. The favor that God trusts you. We must also embrace the process the process that we now have to have faith in God. Faith to obey God. Faith to do whatever God says to do. Faith to believe in God. Notice, my friends, in our text today, God came and he gave the talents out the one, he give five. The other one, he give two. And the other one, he give one. 
and immediately he went on his journey. If you look at the text carefully, you will find that God's trust in us is far more than we trust ourselves. Let me teach you for a moment. How many of you will go to your servants because he went to his servants and say, here, I'm emptying my bank account and I'm going to give you X amount of dollars and I'm going to give you X amount of dollars and I'm going to give you X amount of dollars. How many of you would do that? Mm. Mm. Huh? That's what God did. That's what this parable is about. God says, I'm going to give up everything for you. That's how much trust and faith God has got in us. And he did it by giving up the life of his son on the cross. And he did it knowing that we would turn our backs on him. But even so, he still went ahead with a plan of redemption, the plan to win us back, the plan to reconnect us back with him because we know and you know that sin came in, broke that relationship that God had with us, so God had to restore the relationship. So God says, I, I trust you. I am giving everything to you. I am going to give you my son. So much so, not knowing if his son would make it. Because Jesus had a choice to say, I'm not going to go through with this. His trusted disciple, Judas, right next to him. Hear me this morning. Right next to him. You see, because you only tr give somebody the money back if you really have trust in them, right? I don't think you will give your, 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 your bank account number to somebody you don't trust. So the mere fact that Jesus gave Judas the money bag and Judas was the treasurer, Jesus trusted him. Even though Jesus knew that he was a crook. Even though Jesus knew that he was going to betray him. Yet he trusted him. Even to his death. And some of us have problems trusting each other. The minute they mess up. But you and I, my brothers and sisters, have to be like Jesus if we're going to make it to eternity. And that says that I've got to trust you. You've got to trust me. Even though I mess up, you still have to have faith in me and don't turn your back on me. Uh, I, I'm going to just, just, because you, you, See, this is not exciting. This is hitting too hard for some of us. It hit me hard, my brothers and sisters, because trust is something that is difficult. It is only possible through Jesus Christ. When Jesus is living inside of you, when Jesus is living inside of me, then you and I are able, we are able to trust each other. Can I, can I say this? So if I don't trust you in my marriage, in my home, and I say, oh, I don't trust you, who is living inside of you? Because Jesus trusts to his death. He trusts you. 
He trusts me. He trusts Judas, even though he knew that Judas was going to crucify him, going to sell him out. If you and I are going to be like Jesus, as the song said, this is my song in the home and in the throne, be like Jesus all day long. If we're going to be like Jesus, we must develop this component of trust, this component of faith that works. It says, I, I'm going to trust you. Because you know what? When you do something to me, you're not messing with me. You're messing with the Jesus in me. It's one thing to mess with each other, but it's another thing to mess with Jesus because we know that Jesus always wins. So we must embrace the process, and yes, the process is difficult but by ourselves, but if Jesus is part of your life, the process becomes easy because Jesus makes it possible. The Apostle Paul says, I die daily. I die, not I that live, yet not I, but Christ that's living in me. And because Christ is alive and well in me, the evil that I want to do, I can't do because Christ is in me and he is constraining me. And that's how it works. That's why Paul could say, nevertheless, not I, but Christ that lives in me. Because Paul understood this, that him, the good that he want to do, he can't do it. Only evil. But when Christ is in us, it's possible for that drug dealer to become a preacher. It's possible for that pimp to become a Sabbath school teacher or a treasurer. It's possible for the broken relationship to be restored if we would allow self to die. Last point. Last point of this faith is that we've got to take a leap, make a move. Verse 16 and 17 of the text. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two also gained two more. The text says that the servant was successful by doing something. So the talents were given. The one that had five, he went out and he traded his five and he got five more. The one that was given two went out and traded his two and he got two more. You see, it's one thing to say you have faith it's another to act on the faith that you have, that you say you have. In other words, faith must work. Faith can't stand alone and do nothing. You can say you have faith until the cows come home and nothing would happen. If you want to move in, in by faith, you, you, you have to actually make a move. You, you can't just stay stagnant. You have to do something because if Christ is in you, he is enabling you. He is giving you the strength. He is giving you the power to act on the faith. A young man told a story. He said he was going to move. He's going to move out of his apartment. He's going to buy a house. Didn't know where the house was coming. He didn't have the money. Wasn't qualified. He didn't have a pre-qualification. But he had the faith because God placed that faith in him. So that young man said, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to buy some boxes. 
He went and he bought some boxes. Got some boxes from his job. And he started packing. Because he's moving. He started packing. Because he's moving. And he packed one room. And then he packed another room. And then he packed another room. Until finally everything was packed. But still, he didn't have a house. But in his mind and his prayer was that he was moving. And then all of a sudden, God did something miraculous. And the house that he was praying for, it opened up and, and he was able to move into that house. You see, faith that stands by itself and say, I just have faith, it's not going to bring you success. But the faith that says, I'm going to do something about it. So I want to get a new job. I, I, I want to kick this habit. I, I want to do this thing. I, it's not just that you want to do it and you think about it and you pray about it. You're on your knees about it and you do nothing about it. Guess what? You'll stay on your knees and nothing will happen. You can have all the faith and do nothing about it. Nothing will happen. But the minute you start making some moves, ah, you want a breakthrough. You want God to do something for you. You want God to rescue you from the pit of hell. You can't stay home and go to the bars and keep doing that and expect God to do. No, no, no. You've got to find yourself in the right place. You want a job that God has placed in your heart. You see, God, God first breathes that thing inside of you because God trusts you, because God has faith in you. So he's going to breathe the desires of your heart. It doesn't come from you. It comes from God. And God says that he's going to give you the desires of your heart. So when God breathes it into your life, when God gives you that thing, that desire, you need to then move and, and do something about it. Start acting like God is already, has already given you the thing that you asked for. You can't just sit down and think it's going to happen by accident. James puts it this way. Even so, faith, if it had no works, it's dead being alone. Yet a man says, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. In other words, no matter how much God believes in us, no matter how much God believes that we can do the impossible. If we do not work our faith, if we don't do anything about it, nothing will happen. You remain in the same position. I told you last time, you got to have a transition mindset. Being able to transition being able to move, being able to change, which is all part of growth, which is all part of success. Because faith and works is the very thing that both of us, that we need to help us to move to the next level. We need the faith that God, you need to believe in God. And when you believe in God, you need to do something with the talents that God has given you. Don't take what God has given you and bury it and think that God is going to give you something else. If you want divine favor, God has given each and every one of us a measure of faith. And if you want the favor that God has for you, You've got to start acting. Acting on the faith. You want victory in Jesus? You need to act like you're victorious. Mm. You want to have a, a renewed life. 
You need to act as if your life has been renewed. But if you take the talents as the one man took the talent, and he figured that, you know what? I'm going to just go and hang on to this one because my master is not a good master. That's what he was saying. No, master, you, you sow, you reap where you don't sow. How rude. I'm talking about God. He's saying that you're not good. So because you're not good, because you're this tyrant of a master, I'm just going to hold on so I can give you back what you have given to me. And Jesus said, you unfaithful servant. I want no part with you. But the ones that did something, that went and traded, and they got more. God said, enter into the joy of the Lord. Because you've been faithful in a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. You see, some of us want to be rulers but we don't want to be faithful. You can't be a ruler over many things if you're not faithful with what God has given to you. In the few things that God has given to you, he's given you life. He's given you breath. He's given you the ability to walk and to talk. He's given you the ability to be to use all of the talents and the gifts that he's given to you for his glory. But if you don't use it for his glory, you will lose it. Not only would you lose out of being successful in this life, but you'll lose out on the greatest success. That's eternal life. What am I saying to you, brothers and sisters? Simple. The divine favor that God has given to you. Give him glory by using it. Give him glory. Give him glory by being ministers of what God has given to you. Don't hold on to it. God expects you to use it so that you can have much more. Whatever you need, God promise that he'll give it to you if you have faith that works. If you have faith that says, I'm going to do something, I'm going to make a move. I want to be I want to get out of this rut of a relationship. But you don't do anything about it. Nothing will change. If you want change in your life, you've got to be the change that you want to see. It's got to start with you. Even in your fractured home, your fractured lives. Don't wait for the other person to make the move. You make the move. To restore the relationship. God has made the move to restore the relationship. And if you make the move by faith, God is going to change your situation and your circumstances. You got to believe that. And you got to move by faith and watch God move with you. Eyes closed, your heads bowed. I want to pray for somebody today. Somebody today. You need to make a move. You need to make a move to restore. A broken relationship. 
Somebody needs to make a move to, to restore the relationship with Jesus. You've wandered away, or maybe you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior. And today, because God has given you another day of divine favor, you want to make that move closer to him by surrendering your life to him. If that's you, I want to ask you to raise your hands. I want to pray for you. You want to surrender your life to him. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe you've, those that have raised their hands, maybe you're not a member of God's remnant church yet to show him how much you love the favor that he's given unto you. And if you want to be a member of God's remnant church, you, you want to say, I, I want to be a part of the church. The, dirt, the doors are open for you right now. If that's you, I'm going to ask you to raise your hands or keep your hands raised. Somebody is going to put a card in your hands. We need to write your name. Because we'll get you ready through studies so that you can know Jesus, so you can get closer to him. It's coming. Someone is coming with a card. When you finish, sing Aaron. Church is praying. You want Jesus to work in your life. You want to surrender your life to Jesus today. This is the time to do it. This is the time to do it. Making another call, one last call. That is for that individual or individuals that's here today. And you have lost your trust in people, you have lost your trust even in your marriage. But you want to make the right move today. You want to say, God, I want to. Regain that trust because you have trusted me with life. You've trusted me with the death of your son. But today, you want me to pray for you so that you can regain that trust and that faith. I'm going to ask you to stand and make your way to the front. I want to pray for you. If there's somebody or there's anyone here. It could be your marriage, it could be your children, it could be uh, friends and family, but you want to regain that trust. Surrender. I believe today that God is going to restore trust in your life.
I want to pray for the t individuals that are right in now. If you would just come front, I want to just have a general prayer right now. We can finish that after. Let them just come so we can pray. Come so we can pray. Right here, burdens, burdens are going to be lifted. Victory is in this circle today. By faith, you claim the victory that God has for you. Victory to restore your relationship. Victory to trust again. Victory to be free. Victory to not only just say you love and to say you trust, but to do something about it. Because that's what it's about. Father in heaven, we want to first thank you for the faith that you have in us and for the trust that you have placed in us. God, we thank you for believing in us whereby you give us your only son to die for us. Thank you for believing in us even though we mess up over and over again. You don't turn your back on us. Oh, what a God. Thank you. You still trust us. You still have faith in us. You have faith that we will get it right. So, Father, thank you that you're a God that does not give up very easily. We give up on you, Father, but you said that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so, Father, we thank you for that. Your children are standing here in front of this altar, God, asking you to restore the faith and trust in others that they need to have. Oh God, they may have been hurt. They may have been abused. They may have been misused. But Father, whatever the situation is, we know that you are a God that restores. And so Father, I'm asking that you restore those broken relationships. Restore those broken homes, God. Uh, Lord, I pray that you will allow pride to die. Allow self-centeredness to die because at the end of the day, Father, it's not for us to hold anyone hostage, but it's for us to set them free. Oh, Father, so we release everyone who has ever hurt us. We release everyone who has ever mistreated us. Oh, God, and I pray that you will take all of these broken hearts and I pray God that you will replace that heart of flesh take out the stony hearts Father oh Father and I pray today that those that have accepted you as their personal Savior I pray God the step that they made this giant leap of faith Oh, God, I pray that you will write their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. I pray that you will surround them with, with angels that protect them. Protect them from the evil one. Protect them from the enemy, the darts that the enemy is going to throw at them. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you, that you will protect them. Oh, God, you said that you're a strong tower. Be that strong tower for them. Oh, Father, for those that are sitting, for whatever reason, they need you. I pray that you will extend your love to them. Oh, what love that you have for us, that you sent your son to die for us, and that you're coming again to receive us unto yourself. So, Father, help us to be ready. Help us to get rid of all the besetting sins 
in our lives. Help us, oh God, to, to just trust you with our lives, God. So God, we just place our lives in your hands. As we surrender it to you, we thank you for victory. We thank you for freedom. We thank you for the restored trust. We thank you, God, for mending the broken homes and the broken lives. For doing it right now, God. At this very moment, God. At this very time, God. Break down those barriers, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Let the church say glory. Afternoon. Excuse me. It is stewardship time, and basically, Pastor said everything I was going to say this morning Mercy. because I was looking up stewardship in the Bible, and I came across all of those scriptures. Um, but just think about it. I, I never thought about these two things: that God trusts us. He trusts us with His gifts. So if he's going to trust us with his gifts, we have to do something with those gifts. Now, Goshen, he trusted us with this building, with this church that we prayed about for, what, 30 years? And it's now ours. So not only must we be good financial stewards, but we must be good stewards and take care of our home. Amen. And make sure that you know, if you had candy, don't leave the candy wrappers in the seats. You know, don't tear up paper. Please don't leave the bulletins that people have worked so hard to produce. I will ask the deacons to come forward at this time. Can we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, we come before you at this time to return a faithful tithe and an offering for the work of this ministry, of this church, for your kingdom, Lord. We ask that you would bless those that have it to give, that you would bless those that don't have it but would like to give, that you would bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Okay, a couple things before our benediction. Um, uh, one is we have uh, an announcement for the Key Lime Cove. Today is the last day. So if you got your bulletin today, you'll see the flyer in there. Um, if we don't have enough people sign up today, the trip will be canceled. So we want to make sure if you're interested, please sign up today so we can tally those, you know, individuals up and see Tonet if you have any, if you want to do that, okay? Okay, and the other thing is our elder Carolyn, her last Sabbath is today before she goes to Arizona. So we want to pray for her before she goes. I think she's coming back April. So we want to make sure that she has a, a blessed travel, a blessed time there, and a safe return. So uh, we're going to invite the elders and the pastor up, and we're going to surround Carolyn for prayer. Testing, testing. Heavenly Father, we are so gracious, one, Lord, that you have given us, Elder Carolyn, Lord, to, to help here with our ministry, Lord. We're so grateful, Lord God, because she is a light to this church, Lord, and we are just thankful of that first and for all, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you just be with her, Lord God. Grant her and all individuals traveling with her, Lord God, safe travels, Lord God. Just cover them, Lord God. Have your angels and their guardian angels just right there right with them, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would just have the safest travel, Lord. We pray, Lord God, once she's there, Lord, that everything will just be as good as you will, Lord God, for her, Lord. That she will be remain safe, Lord God, and she will take care of all the business she needs, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for her safe travels back, Lord God, because... Because we want her here, Lord God, helping us out, Lord. You know, uh, we don't want to be selfish, but, Lord, we want her here. <laughs> so we thank you, Lord, and we just, we just praise you, Lord, because we are, we, we are blessed to have her, and we just want you to watch over her during those travels. Father, we are so thankful for your love, for your mercy. We thank you because you have permitted your, your elder Carlin to serve your church, and as she go and serve in another vineyard for a little time. We ask that you be with her in a very special way. As they see her, may they continue to see you living within her. And then bring her back home safe to your church. In Jesus' name we pray. So, Father, as we linger just a little longer, a good man's step, a good woman's step is ordered by the Lord. And so, Father, I pray that you will order her steps as she spends four months away. I pray that you'll protect her and keep her, that no harm or danger come to her. Lord, I pray that her light will always shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just commit her in your care, asking that you protect her, asking that you will hover over her, asking that your her guiding angel will be actively protecting her as we know he will. Lord, bring her back safely. But may her stay be a ministry right where she is, right where she's going to minister to those that she come in contact with and bringing them closer to Jesus. So we just thank you for us, for her. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, please stand for our benediction.
Our Father in heaven, Lord, we're grateful, Lord. We're grateful for this service you have provided us with today, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you have your angels watching over the people today, Lord God, and just, just be with us as we leave this place, Lord God, and just keep in our minds those things which you saw good, Lord God, to keep with us from what we've learned, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen.